Hey guys, Greg here at Let's Solve Linked List Cycle, lead code number 141. It's claimed to be an easy, but there's actually some tricky components to it, and we're gonna learn a really useful algorithm. Now we're given head, the head of a linked list as usual, and we want to determine if that linked list has a cycle in it. Now we don't really need to read this, it's pretty visual. So if we are going through the list, and then we actually never stop going through the list, well then we have a cycle. So there's really no completion to this, because it keeps wrapping around every time we get to the negative four. So in other words, it basically happens because we're traversing and then we actually have a next pointer. So this next pointer is actually pointing to a node that we've already seen before. And that's going to give you a clue into our first solution. Okay, so suppose we had this list here and you can see there's no cycles in it. If we were just to traverse this, we'd point C or cur equal to the head and we would just kind of go through by setting cur to be cur.next. We could go through while cur is a valid node and if we got out of bounds or when it equals none, well, well, then we're out of bounds and so clearly there wasn't a cycle but say that there actually was a cycle and so we'll point four say over to two here so now we're in the circumstance where if we were to do this if we were to send cur through just setting it to cur dot next well, this is actually going to go on infinitely, okay? So yes, you could return false if we get to the point where occur is none, but otherwise, how do we actually detect this cycle? Because this is an infinite loop. Now, if you ever want to detect duplicates, then you could use something like a set or a hash map, anything that uses hashing. So we'll just use a hash set. So in here, we'll just store node references to the nodes we've seen. And you want references, not values. You don't want these to be integers because if you were in the case where actually these had two different values here well this is not an issue here okay this part right here does not imply a cycle because these are two different nodes they have the same value but they are two different nodes so we don't want to put you know integers over here we actually want to put node references and it's really easy to do that in code even C here you could actually just put C into the set and that would use the memory address that would work just fine for the visualization it's a little bit harder so I'm actually going to write the number which is going to indicate which which one of these it is, but know that I'm actually not putting integers here. I'm actually putting references to the node itself. And you can do that. You can hash on memory addresses because a memory address is immutable, which is the definition for hashing in most cases. Okay, so we just put this node into the set here, and then we will move forward by setting C to bc.next. C is just short for cur. So we see two, so we're going to put that into the set. We haven't seen any duplicates yet. Here we go over to three, we'll put in three, and this is going to plug in four here. And at this point, we actually traverse over back to here. And so before we put stuff into the set, we're going to ask if it's already in the set. And so it is already in the set, okay? This node reference here that is already in the set and that is when we would return false here okay Okay, and imagine we didn't have some cycle, so we'd actually get out here, and so C would be none at some point, and that's a case where we could actually return true, okay? Now, the only problem with this solution is that this has O of N space here, okay? We're using a hash set to store these N values. So the time is O of N, we're not gonna be able to do any better than that. There's an algorithm called Floyd's cycle finding algorithm. There's a couple names for this algorithm. It could be called like slow and fast pointers, it could be called, uh, there's this guy named Floyd that came up with it. So Floyd's cycle finding algorithm, tortoise and hare, because, you know, hares are faster than tortoises, kind of like a slow pointer is, you know, slower than a fast pointer. Let's see how to do this. And it's going to end up being constant space. Okay, so for this example, it's actually not quite necessary, but I find it's useful to start off with a dummy node. So this is just creating a new node. The value of it doesn't really matter. And we're going to set that dummy.next to equal the actual head. Okay, so that way we can set up our two pointers. We'll call them S for slow and F for fast. So those are both going to point over to the dummy. And the fast pointer is going to move two steps every time the slow pointer moves one step. So the fast pointer moves twice as fast as slow. So say that we were to move slow once, immediately after we'd move fast over twice. And then we move over once, we move fast over twice. Well, F can't move twice here. It actually can't even move once. And so we can detect that right here. And since fast can't move anymore, well, that means that we actually found an end to the list. And therefore there wasn't a cycle because if there was a cycle, well, then you would have been trapped in that the whole time. And so there must not have been a cycle we were about to escape. And so since it was trying to go out of bounds, this is actually a scenario where we'd return false because there wasn't a cycle. Okay, but again, say that we were in the scenario where there actually was a cycle. 
so maybe four was pointing over to two. So if we were to do this again, we'll point slow and fast over to the dummy, and then we're going to move slow over once, fast is going to go over twice. Slow goes over once, fast goes over twice. Slow goes over once, fast goes over twice. Look at what happened here. They actually started pointing at the same node. So they are pointing to the same node reference here. Now, what's super crazy, and I feel very counterintuitive, is that if there is a cycle in the linked list, then it's actually guaranteed that if you run this algorithm where we have two pointers running at a different pace, at some point, they are actually going to equal the same node. They might not equal necessarily this node, but they're going to equal some node that is you know, part of that cycle. Okay, so I don't really want to talk about why that's true, but just know that this algorithm actually does work and there's a theorem behind it. Okay, so let's write our code. We're going to set a dummy node equal to a new list node. We really don't care about its value. We're just going to specify that dummy.next is equal to the head. So that connects them up. Now we're going to set both slow and fast pointing equal to the dummy. So that basically says, you know, fast is going to point to dummy and slow is going to point to fast, but that means they're pointing to the same thing. While we have fast and we we have fast.next. Why? Because we're going to set fast equal to fast.next.next. So this code here is assuming that fast.next actually exists. It has to be a node because if this wasn't a node, well, something like null or none, that's not going to have a dot next. So each time this runs, we're making sure fast is a node and we're making sure fast.next is a node so that we can move fast over twice. Okay. And so every time fast moves over once, slow is going to move over once. And if you are ever running into the case where slow is fast. So if their memory addresses are the same, they're pointing to the same node. So that means there must have been a cycle by Floyd's awesome algorithm here. We return true in that case. And then otherwise, if you actually escape this loop, well, that means that this expired. And so at some point, you basically got through the list. And if you got through the list, there must not have been a cycle. So we can just return false there. Now the time and space here is not super intuitive because if there is a cycle, we don't really know how long it's going to take fast and slow to equal each other. We know they will equal each other, uh, but it turns out that the time complexity, they are gonna find it in you know big O of N time. It's not gonna take that long for them to find each other. And the space complexity of this algorithm, this actually doesn't take any space. It holds just you know a dummy as a new node, that's fine. And two pointers, that's really all it is. So that's gonna be constant space. That's why it's better than the hash map solution because the hash map solution, or the sorry, the hash set solution, that would be big O of N. In this solution, we get rid of the space I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.